Hi there, Bob Wormsley from Insidium here. It's Top Tip Tuesday time. And in today's video, we're going to be using mesh tools and Nexus and X particles to create a dynamic particle simulation. And we're going to be projecting a spline onto an animated surface, and then making a pretty cool particle sim from that animated spline. So let's start the clock and we'll get started. In our seed, we have this text spline spelling out X, and we also have, if we make it active, this plane primitive. We've got some Nexus modifiers and an emitter here, which we'll look at in a moment. So this plane, we have 800 by 400. We need, need some more segments because we're going to deform it. So let's put it on, say, 80 width and 40 height segments. And let's go and go to our Cinema 4D Deformers menu and we'll bring in a displacer. We're going to use this to displace our plane. Let's put it as a child. Let's go to the shading and we'll add a noise. In this noise, we'll change it to dense. We'll put the global scale really high, maybe 2000. And we'll put the animation speed on one. And that, if I hit NA to hide the lines, that is giving us this animation. So then let's go and add a bit more animation to this. We'll bring in another deformer and we're going to bring in a jiggle. Let's make it a child and this one needs to be below the displacer. And the jiggle, we're going to go to the object tag. We're going to put the stiffness way down to 10, structural down to 10 and increase this strength to maybe 200%. And this is going to give us some nice kind of rippling springiness to our animation. That looks good. Now the cool thing about the jiggle is we can go to the cache and we can enable this, calculate, and it's going to cache all of this movement to disk. And that means that we can switch off the displacer above it because that's now been cached and we can scrub this. And that's looking pretty cool. Right, if I hit N q it shows the materials our plane's got this material on which is a pretty basic material with a noise and a bit of bump and what we want to do now is project this spline onto this animated surface so the way we're going to do that is with the mesh tool let's go to insidium mesh tools and bring in first of all we need to make the spline very evenly sampled so we're going to use the mesh tool spline sample to do that this is going to give us lots of even points on our spline which is going to make the projection work really smoothly so the spline sample let's make the text a child of the spline sample and straight away we get a very janky spline we've lost the x shape let's go to the object tab what we need to do, we're going to change the method from uniform to distance. Yep, and look now, this is every two centimetres creating a point for our spline. So that's even, that's going to go onto our projected surface really well. Let's close the spline and then go to the display of the spline sample and just switch off all of the points and the gradient. Don't need to look at that. Okay, now we want to project this onto our surface. So let's go to Insidium, X Particles, and we'll go to, not X Particles, we want Mesh Tools, and we're going to go to uh, Mesh Tools Point Project. Now this needs two things. It says, which surface do you want to project your spline or object onto? So let's drag in our plane there. And then we need to make whatever we want to get projected a child of it. So let's make the spline sample a child of the point project. And there we have it, but nothing's happening. And that's because by default, the point project is set to look upwards. It's in parallel Y mode. So it's firing rays upwards. And if it collides with any points on a surface, it'll project them. But there's nothing there. We need to change this to plus Z. And you'll see that, yes, look, now our spline is projected and it is on that animated surface perfectly. Now, we're going to emit some particles from this. So let's just do a couple of things. Let's offset it from the surface just by one centimeter and change the blend is it from its beginning position to its surface position. Let's just put that on 99 so it's not exactly touching. OK, let's set up our particle simulation then. So we have an emitter here. Let's activate it. And the emitter will go to the object tab. We're in object mode. We're going to drag in our point project as the emitter source object. And we're going to emit from the edges. And in the emission mode, we've got it set to rate. Lifespan of 35, variation 10. 2,000 per frame birth rate. No speed and a radius of 2 centimeters. And that is giving us this particle emission.
Now, the reason they're getting knocked about the place is because our plane has a collider tag on it, but there's no physics or movement in this yet. So let's activate this gravity, which is a nexus gravity with 200 strength. So now these are going to fall downwards like that. And then let's activate this turbulence to give them a nice bit of turbulent movement. That's looking cool. And now if you see, we come to the side, you'll see that they're perfectly being born on our projected spline. And then as it animates and kind of collides with them, it pushes them around, which looks really cool. Let's add a few more physics now. Don't have to do this step, but I like to go to Insidium X particles nexus and bring in a constraints and the constraints we're going to use is a viscosity constraint and this is going to link uh, let's say four connection limit so one particle will be connected to up to four others with a springy viscosity constraint within let's say 25 centimeters and this is just going to connect those particles together and bring in a bit of real physics into this so they're actually interacting with each other in our scene and that's looking pretty cool i do like the uh, viscosity constraint look and there we have our spline sampled spline which has been projected onto the surface of this animated surface and then we're able to directly emit particles from that um, projected spline for some pretty cool particle sims